So are there different designations or different types of shelter halves in the Federal Army? Well, this week on the 11th OVC, the typology of the different types of shelter halves that were contracted during the American Civil War to the Federal Army. So like with anything military based, whether it's the quartermasters during the Civil War or the historians after the Civil War, we all tend to give designations or typology to the different nuances or the different types of the same item that were contracted during the war. And an example of that is look no further than the forage cap. We've had type one and type two forage caps, whether they were actually called that during the war, which they weren't, it's more of a afterthought or a way that historians later on can identify or designate between the two. The shelter half is no different. Simply put, there are three distinct types of shelter halves. Now, there are subcategories of a couple of these, but three distinct ones. The type one, the type two, and of course, the type three shelter half. So now, of course, those who watch the channel, I love this type of deep dive and find it important to know the details to help properly date period images, to conduct research, or to even improve our impression. So knowing what types of shelter halves were common in certain places and certain dates, like the Type 1 or the Type 2, whether it's Eastern or Western theater, is definitely important to the hobby historian like myself or even you. So as we begin, let me first identify the characteristics that help identify a type 1, type 2, or type 3 shelter half. First, look at the construction, either a two or three piece construction as far as how many different pieces of canvas or linen or whatever was used. The second thing to look at is the number of buttons and the placement of buttons around the piece of fabric. So whether it's all the way around, only on one side, maybe on three sides, that helps distinguish. And the third thing to look at is the number of tent loops uh, for stakes or tent pin stake loops at the bottom of the tent, whether we're talking two or three loops for each side or six or four loops total for the tent. And lastly, you want to look at the seam or the uh, joint of the two different or three different types of fabric that make that half, whether it runs horizontally or whether it runs vertically when constructed or when mounted like this. So with those characteristics in mind, let's look at the different types of shelter halves. So the first type was probably the most rare out of all three types and was the original French design called the tent d'abri. Now I butchered that pronunciation, uh, but in the French it came from, you know, it came from the actual French design. In fact, the whole idea of soldiers splitting the load of a campaign rated shelter tent was first officially proposed by George McClellan at the same time he proposed the new cavalry saddle that was later named after him. This first style was the true original French design, or it also includes the domestically produced versions of that same design. So these type one shelter halves were actually made of two pieces of linen with buttons around all four sides so the soldiers could create any size of completed shelter, shebang, or other tent that they could muster all together. We actually can only confirm about 10,000 of these original French design tents were imported from France, but we also know that about 10,000 of those same design of shelter halves, the Tent des Abris, were actually contracted domestically in the fall of 1861. So again, while the Type 1 shelter half was comparatively rare to all the others, we do know that this version of the shelter tent was likely issued to the 7th New Jersey in 83rd Pennsylvania, mainly because they were also issued a lot of other French imported gear as well. However, also described in the first main cavalry, they were issued in about May of 1862, a shelter tent with buttons, quote, all the way around. And the fact that they say all the way around suggests that they were issued the Type 1 Tent d'Abri or the Type 1 Shelter Half because the later versions did not have those 40 buttons all the way around the edges of the fabric. Now, let's move on to the Type 2 Shelter Half. The Type 2 Shelter Half was probably the most common and in many ways continue to be the most interesting since there are a lot of different variations of the Type 2 Shelter Half. So to start with the basics, what makes a type two shelter half is that it has a three piece construction and two tent pin loops at the bottom corners. To our knowledge, the details of the sources we found, no type two tents were issued with a third loop in the middle of the base. And that was of course reserved for the type three that we'll get to later. So now, of course, with anything that we say, everything is nuanced and there's a lot of variations. And of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. So for instance, we must note that a small group of type two shelter halves were made with the third tent pin loop in the fall of 1864 and most likely was issued to Western troops. Now, when I say it was made with three pieces, I mean just that, two large pieces and one random third piece in the middle 
to make it wide enough for the required length and width. So the reason this was even a thing was because the larger tents and the naval demands for sailcloth or cotton duct or other similar heavy fabrics that was made with longer dimensions were not available to the quartermaster in the numbers needed. Thus, a lesser fabric called cotton drill was then contracted out to make shelter halves. However, drill fabrics were not woven into wide dimensions, thus the contractors had to add this random little piece of fabric as a third piece to make the shelter halves long enough or wide enough depending on how they made their shelter half. So again, so even if the seam went vertically or horizontally, there would still have to be three pieces, which makes the type 2 shelter half pretty uh, identifiable in the photos. So also one other thing to note is that this style was also made of linen duct as well as cotton drill. So of course, if we're talking about the typology of the shelter halves, whether it's type one, two, or three, we gotta get into the subtypes. Now, of course, there's type 2A and 2B. Now, a type 2A shelter has the seams running vertically, while the type 2B shelter half has the seams running horizontally. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, knowing these nuances or different types or subtypes helps identify period photos, do better research, and of course, improve our impressions as living historians or reenactors. So the reason I bring this up is that it's important to note that the author of the Federal Civil War shelter tent, which by the way is where the vast majority of this video's research came from, believes that a general rule can be assumed that the Eastern depots probably had the more vertical shelter halves while the western theater had the more horizontal shelter halves thus making it a good rule of thumb but of course there's always exceptions to this rule the type 2 shelter tent was far more common than the later type 3 and for sure the type 1. in fact even on july 16th of 1864 the quartermaster contracted out an additional 50,000 of these quote double seam or type 2 shelter tents which means that's 50,000 tents or a hundred thousand halves uh, in addition to ordering the type 3s as well in the same order which meant that the type 2 shelter halves would likely have been seen from early 1862 all the way to the end of the war. All right, so now let's move on to the Type 3 shelter half. So obviously called the, quote, later version, the Type 3 shelter half can be generally identified by the single seam or a two-piece construction. Now, while I did say that Type 2s were more common, the Type 3 shelter tents were, were beginning to hit the quartermaster towards the end of 1863, and in fact, Type 2s and Type 3 tents overlapped construction for at least 10 months from October of 1862 to September of 1864. Now, with that oversimplified way of identifying type threes being a two-piece or single seam construction, let's get a little bit deeper. So in the broad category of the type three shelter half, there are two subcategories, which of course, again, is 3A and 3B. The difference is all on how many pin loops or tent pin or stake loops there are in the tent. So now the type 3A is the single seam or double piece construction with two tent pin loops at the corners, not one in the middle. And of course, the type 3B is a single seam two-piece construction like the type a, 3A, uh, but it has three tent pin loops at the bottom. Of course, the two corners and then one in the middle where that vertical seam comes down at the bottom. The 3A with only two loops was manufactured regularly from October of 1863 to September of 1864, while the 3B version with three loops was regularly made from August of 1864 to July of 1865. In fact, so many Type 3B tents were in surplus that the U.S. Army kept issuing them all the way through the 1870s, 1880s, all the way through the Indian Wars, and didn't contract an additional shelter half contract until 1892. So that means soldiers in the 1890s were still being issued tents contracted out during the American Civil War decades earlier. Now, with all that information we've just covered, I gotta just recommend you guys do your own research. Dive in, you know, touch fabric, get into the, the material culture and the period images, period documents to discover for yourself just the nuances 
that is the, the material culture of the American Civil War. As you guys know, if you want to join the largest, fastest growing Civil War research community on the internet, you got to go to theresearcharsenal.com. To give you an idea of how the research arsenal helped this video alone, is when I was looking for images doing research on you know what you know were popular tents from an image you know, evidence standpoint, I went in the researcharsenal.com, I typed in you know shelter tent and shelter half. Immediately I had 177 images from the Library of Congress that we had already tagged with every item in the image to help identify whether it's type one, type two, you know, type three A, type two B, whatever it is. So again, if you haven't already, try the researcharsenal.com and help find uh, some of the best photos uh, from the Library of Congress that we have gone in and actually tagged every single item in the image, which I can't say just it was very helpful. That website was very helpful in doing the research for this video. Lastly, I got to give a shout out to Wamba and White and Company, Dan Wamba uh, and Brian White. They were able to help me with uh, a few pieces of research. In fact, uh, Brian White gave me a piece of inf information that actually kind of changed uh, how I did this video or how I kind of narrated a little bit uh, because it actually contradicted some presuppositions that I and a couple others have had. Uh, so I will say this too, guys, if you're looking for a good reproduction uh, of, a, of a good quality shelter tent, definitely go to their website, check it out. They have four uh, specific contractors that they model themselves after, uh, whether it's the type 2A, 2B, they have the 3A model as well. Uh, definitely go check them out. They have good, as you guys know, good quality reproductions on that end. Well, so there you have it, the type 1, the type 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B shelter halves. Uh, again, just kind of review. The type one is the original French design tent d'abri uh, with basically the uh, single seam two piece construction with buttons all the way around, generally made of linen. The type two was a three piece construction, and of course, 2A or 2B indicated on whether the seam went horizontally or vertically. And then going on in the type threes, the three went back to the single seam or two piece construction, again with the distinction of A or B uh, being how many tent pin loops there were at the bottom. Now, I must also note that regarding the material used, research indicates that cotton drill and cotton duct were used, with cotton duct being the more common fabric overall. Now, also, as expected, if we're talking about research and identifying period photographs, the Type 3B halves appear in images taken late in the war, like that of a camp inside Fort Burnham, and of course, the winter camp of the Oneida Cavalry near Petersburg. So we're gonna go ahead and end it there. We have a lot more videos in the Shelter Half series coming up, so make sure you check those out. And of course, until we see you next time, ride hard.